see how bad of practice I am. All right, here we go. Welcome back, people. It's another day here at the shop. I'm letting the dogs out. They're pooping. I don't know if we're gonna keep that in. I'm out of practice. It's been a little time since I've recorded because we've just been focusing on building parts. Grinding, grinding. It's just one last run. Seat, battery tray, rear fender. These parts are the most complicated and there's multiple color options as well. And, and, and we have a new employee here at the shop. Hi, G. Hi. This is G, new member of the team, currently cleaning up some parts. She's being very helpful and it's good to have her around. No response on that. Ooh, this is a milling machine. It's really a, a jig bore, a mini milling machine. This is what I'm using it for. Movable table, spindle. I've been looking for a little milling machine. I want a little one so that it fits in the corner nice. I don't have huge needs. This space doesn't have three phase, single phase only. This fits all those categories and it's great because it's it works and it's here. I'm using this machine to build a die. See this little shape here? This is gonna be a stamped cut piece. It's gonna punch out this shape. We're gonna use that shape for the fender. Underneath the fender, there's four cable guides to keep the wire from falling on the wheel. This is an older one. We have these little tabs that hold the wire. The way we did it before, those little tabs were cut on the CNC machine. Each one of those little tabs had to be cleaned up, all that slag, and they're hard to hold on to. It took forever. A punched version would be better. Just to give you a visual, this is the bottom, the top. The positive side is gonna be inserted in here, and this comes down, and, and we'll press out the shape. I just finished reaming those brass bushings so that the pin glides. It's supposed to glide really nice through these pins. It doesn't glide that well yet, but the pin itself needs to be pressed into the bottom, and that's my next step, so I'll take you with me. I got the, I have the work set up. I'm gonna, there's just no good way to do this. We're pressing in this pin into this block forever. Here we go. Pins are pressed in, has a little movement, a little tight still. I can't get this thing to move. What, what do you gotta get? What? I can't get this thing to move. Just don't worry about it. We're doing the heat treating stage of the die. This section to be hardened so that it doesn't just fall apart. And the male section, which we already did. You can see it's nice and blue. Got hot, dip it in water. There's a bunch of ways to do it. We did it this way. Oil absorbs heat slower. Water cools it faster. We're not explaining it. We're just showing, telling. And it gives it a different type of temper. And when you use oil. You don't even care about the details. And when you use oil, the metal, which is porous and really hot, sucks in the carbon from the oil and adds like a carbon hardened layer to the outside of the metal. Yeah. Take that shit tools about I knew you did. <laughs> Looks like a good one to me. Oh. Woo! That's toast. Did you see that? Yeah. Did you get that on film? Mm-hmm. Ah, it's starting to look like something, huh? You're just anxious. I just want to see you work. I think ready for press. This is our first attempt. Nice. <laughs> Good job, Pete. It works. Clean as a whistle. Today we are doing tires. Mmm, that was a nice snap. Mmm, they look good. Don't they look just 
so, so nice. The bearings need to be pulled out for the painting. You know, they gotta put them back. That's what Spot's doing right now. And then secondly, we got Gene working on handles, handles, battery lids. We passed these today with a pneumatic tool. These were the instructions for our new rivet gun, which are going straight into the garbage. This is our first time using one of these machines. It's actually amazing if you have never used a pneumatic rivet gun. You do it by hand and it's awful, or you get this thing and you hit a button and it's boom, just does it in a second. Yeah. Put your hand over the pole. It's scary. I didn't, I didn't ask you, Sabat, what did you think about your viral crocodile? No, no, it's good. Is that what you had in mind when you said baby crocodiles? Did you know you'd be a, a meme for the ages? We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna start a TikTok, you know. Did, you should have uh, actually got a video of baby crocodiles so people knew what I meant. <laughs> they sound like laser beams. They sound, yeah, like meh, no. They do sound like that. Another day, what are we doing today? Well, completed the first moto battery. Wired it up, charging now. Much better than our first batch we did six months ago. Look how sweet this thing came out. I mean, the box alone, like we made this entire thing. I mean, you saw, this is the metal that we made the crocodile baby song out of. I wanted to add one last gem detail to the battery. As you notice, it's pretty, pretty blank. I want to add a little badge that says Moto and then the voltage and amperage. And I want to do it with the engraver. It needs a little bit of work before it's ready to go. Like I need to add a little belt. Here's the other issue though, is that if I want to make the Moto logo, you know, the M with the line, I got to make that in the new milling machine that we got. It's a lot of steps. I've got to make the template piece to get the tool running to make the badge. What I'm saying is, is that this is gonna take a while, but I think it's worth doing. I gotta tell Sabat though, if I told him I was spending an entire day making a badge, he would be furious. I don't know, he's, he's gonna see me, he's gonna see me roll this thing in there. He's gonna know. Yeah, but I have an engraver. But the engraver doesn't work yet. It's gonna work right now. I'm just gonna put this on here and put lube on it. Turn a couple of handles. Plus I have to make the Moto logo. I gotta do that with the milling machine. Pete, just make a sticker. A sticker? I mean, this is cool and you gotta get it working, but like, I don't know. If That's right, I gotta get it working anyway, you're right. I gotta get it working anyway, so I might as well do this now. But like, if you're gonna make these bikes in the long run, are you gonna make a VIN plate by hand with this engraver? Every time. The battery doesn't need a very special handmade VIN plate. It needs a sticker. You're gonna make like four VIN plates with this bike? No. All right, so I'm not gonna do the, that whole, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. You called it right. You're wise beyond your years. Oh, thank you. Hire me. No, no, don't Ask hire him. He's it. taken, he's taken. Whew. Lots happened in the last week. We have several bikes almost finished. Boom, silver one and a black. I knew the silver one was gonna come out real nice. Silver wheels and the forks, it just happened to be silver, so we got that. Fork gears, the battery tray with all the trimmings. You really get to see that air pass through and the seats. We gotta get the top on and the back piece, but it's close. Oh, the black one's even got a side cover on here. Nice, I think it looks good. And of course the black bike, has black wheels, silver bike, has silver wheels. Full contrast between the two, they're kind of like opposites. Also, we're doing an LED headlight. 
Previously, we did a halogen bulb. The halogen bulbs are bright, but they got hot, and in the headlight, we have a little wiring block that sort of like marries all of the control stuff together. That heat's not great for the wiring blocks. LED's way cooler, but these LEDs are super bright. It's not a downgrade, it's an upgrade, if anything. Just a little extra money to implement, but it's worth it. This is the buck or mold for our vacuum forming on the battery lid. We did a couple. I'll show you how those couple came out. I wasn't crazy about the results. This little dimple made it really hard to get the mold out of the plastic. So what I did was really smooth this thing out. That dimple effect was happening around here where we have a third layer of wood. The transition between the two was not good and it was creating a little hookup. I went back and spent more time on this mold to make it better. I spent an extra three days bondoing, sanding, rebondoing. Today I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna put some primer on here, sand it, and give it a nice coat of paint so this thing will be really ready to go. Ooh, that mold's looking nice. That's smooth. Smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Hi, Sheila. They're such good dogs. Great chap dogs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, guys, guys. I'm really lucky. Well, not the bikes, not the bikes. Oh. Well behaved. Oh, 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 whoa, oh. whoa. Damn. <laughs> do the dogs do this? No, I do it. I mean, no. I left the oil away. Don't take the blame. Tomorrow, we're supposed to go to this place and get some more tools. Can't pass up on this deal. There's a guy handling his grandfather's affairs. Recently passed away. Machinist, a little bit of a hoarder. His house is full of garbage and really high grade machinist tools. What a combination. I was there last week and I was picking through stuff. The most American pickers thing I've ever done, but I'm just peeling back trash bags, dead brats, and brand new tools, brand new machinist stuff. And I have a pile of it here. This pile, it's a lot of great stuff. I'm going back. He has two machines, really useful for us. Old school screw machines, screw making machines. They're very, very heavy. They're not that big. They're super compact, but crazy heavy. And what they can do is take solid bar steel or square or whatever you have and make spacers, screws, bolts, little specialty hardwares to your specs. It's good for hundreds or thousands of repetitive jobs just doing this over and over and over again. That is what we want to be doing. I just don't want to make half a dozen mopeds. I want to make hundreds of these mopeds. So I want those tools. There's so many items on this bike and to order, ah, uh, it's, it's, uh. It's not easy. So we want to be as self-helping as we can. You know, one more thing that we can make in-house is good. This is good. It's good news. We're going back tomorrow and we're gonna see the inside of this guy's house. It's not gonna look great, but there's a lot of buried treasures. I mean, we did some treasure hunting last week. This is some next level treasure hunting. I'd say we bring the sniffing dogs, but I don't want them to, you know, eat something that'll make them ill. So I'm excited. I haven't, I haven't been able to sleep. Whew, sweating up a storm. It's already so hot. Got the U-Haul truck. We're picking up those crazy screw machines. Ch check it out. Hi, Jay. Hi. There's uh, the engine hoist, a couple of jumbo machines. Passing on to me. I'm gonna make these machines and make a lot of motion parts. G, will you? Will you take, will you take the camera? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> When is that paper done? 2001. <laughs> like, it's got a back page on? No and we're, way! We were laughing because <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. not the real back page. <laughs> right, right. Hmm, I wonder where they got that from. That's ridiculous. We did it, guys. We got one. One more to go. Is one, a, is one enough? <laughs> My pores are done. They're done extruding sweat. It's just awful. Ah. 
We had cherry picking here the whole time? I don't know what I got myself into. <laughs> I don't either, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> this is uh, ridiculous. We like filled up the entire U-Haul truck with a lot of garbage. A lot of it is. A lot of it. Back to the shop. Here we go, everybody. I don't know if you could see the, the sweat. Back at the shop. And we're unloading these ridiculous machines. Do I regret it? Do I regret it? A little bit. That's a little bit. The fear is the forklift is only rated at 3,000 pounds. These things weigh a little bit more than that. Maybe 3,500 pounds. Go up. The car is rising. Nice. That's, that's natural. Got it in place. We had to move all the stuff around to get these huge tools in and I don't know, the place is a mess. I mean, this is a big pile of giblets, parts. So excited to go through all that stuff. But we're kind of busy right now and I, I have to really force myself to focus and not fall into the trap of going through this huge pile of garbage. We're back on our, our job. Look at that, my mold for the, the battery lid. Super smooth, and hopefully won't get snagged up this time. Let's go, we gotta cut this bread up. All hands on deck, all hands on deck. We're having trouble getting the mold back out of the plastic, if you can't tell by the video footage. The amount of hours we spent on this one thing. So Sabat has this idea that I personally am just not... Has been against this whole time and would not try. I think it's a brilliant idea and it's gonna work great. It's not the brilliance that bothers me, it's just the danger. We already talked about it, there's no danger. We're gonna be able to put at least 300 pounds of force on it. That's what I'm worried about. 300 pounds? It's not even that much. I think it's 900 pounds, it takes the cr like, crush of skull. If you can't see it, what we're doing is dropping the mold in the, in the box like we have been, but the crane is gonna help lift it up. My fear is that it'll lift it up all right, but the box and everything. And if it comes up and hits me in the face, it, it shouldn't. That's it on you. Uh, I'm gonna have 911 ready to go, pre-dialed in my phone. You know, if the table does start to pick up and it comes up maybe like just a little bit, no, you can just that's come not over. Gonna happen. Happen. Your... This is gonna come up first. Yeah. Oh, it, it's gonna be like it's gonna dance. We're gonna try this, but I don't know. This is it. Better was it because it was your idea? No, this is way smarter. Work was, smarter, not harder. I'm all about work smarter, not harder. This is great. That was a great extra action. This one is pretty. Put that in the dumb pile. <sighs> Happily. Happy to announce that we have had 1 million views on our channel. 1 million views, a million views, a million times one of our videos has played out on the internet. I mean, it's, it's taken us several years to get that number, but it's a good like landmark sort of stepping stone. Mm, forget the word that means accomplishment. It's an accomplishment. We got something accomplished. Thanks for watching. Here's to the next million at this rate. It would take 
We're almost there, guys. We should have all these bikes done in about a week. Probably when this video gets edited, they're already out there. They're already out there. Really excited about all the stuff that we got going on. I'm excited for these new tools. I'm excited that we have G on board. She's been a big help. She can help us continue to grow the team because the bot's going back to Portland soon. Once these bikes are done, we're gonna need some new people. You know, she's gonna help me find them wherever you are. If you're interested in working at the shop, we're in Bradenton now, Bradenton, Florida. Email me, mopedproblems at gmail.com. Let me know. This is Pete from Second Stroke Mopeds saying, don't forget about mopeds. We'll see you next week.